A roundup in the West. The federal government is corralling some of the 82,000 wild horses that are living on public lands in 10 Western states. While it might conjure up thoughts of the Old West, it's the modern technology the government is using that has become controversial. Joy Benedict has the story. It is a calm that's blanketed this hillside since the West was won. But just after dawn on this summer day in the high desert of Northern California, it was the hum of machine that sliced through the silence. On the range, this is the sound of controversy for man and Mustang. Some horses here in Twin Peaks were raised on the range for the U.S. Cavalry. Jeff Fontana has been working these lands for more than 30 years with the Federal Bureau of Land Management. It's charged with caring for America's wild horses. Uh, they're living symbols of the historic and pioneer spirit of the West. But with an estimated 82,000 of them running free in 10 states, this year alone, the Bureau, known as BLM, is tasked with slimming the herds by 20,000 horses and burros. We've been using helicopters um, for most of the program. And really, helicopters are a safe and efficient way to move large numbers of animals across the landscape. As the chopper descends on a group of horses, it pushes in, pulls back, pushes in again, eventually corralling them into a trap. But how dangerous is this for them? Well, injuries occur. You know, uh, we're talking about wild horses, wild animals that have never been around humans. But our track record is, is really good in this program. Injuries resulting in death um, from our gather activities um, are less than uh, one half of 1%. But of course, you have to understand how traumatizing or sad it is for the public to see you lose any horse. Sure. It's also a, a, a situation we're trying to avoid losing horses on the range due to degraded resources. And while it's hard to imagine the overpopulation of anything out here, that's what the BLM says is happening. We try and keep the herd at the, at the right size or else we're going to have animals that don't have food to eat or, or water to drink. Jason Luderman works for the National Horse and Burrow Program. It's operating 46 roundups in the West this year, including this one in California. Wild horse and burrow herds increase at 15 to 20 percent a year. If we weren't here to manage that growth, the herds will keep growing. Eventually, they will uh, degrade the land enough to where they will run out of food and water. So you're basically saying that you manage the herd to keep the herd. That's exactly right. Yep. Our goal is to manage healthy herds on healthy public lands. And so the way we can do that is to make sure that there's enough resources out here for those animals to survive. The BLM manages 26.9 million acres of land established in the 1940s to oversee and preserve federal lands and lease them for lucrative livestock grazing. But when wild mustangs started being hunted, Congress passed the Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrow Act in 1971 to protect them and the land they live on. The charge of, of the government, the BLM, is to humanely manage, and there's nothing humane about what's going on. Congresswoman Dina Titus, a Democrat from Nevada, has initiated a formal review of what the BLM is doing. It wasn't until some of the activist groups started tracking those roundups and taking video of them that I realized just how horrendous they are. They use helicopters, they run horses down. She also introduced a bill to ground the choppers, which last year were used in roundups where 25 horses died. She says there may be a more humane method. They charge a high rate. I say if you don't use helicopters, you can hire a cowboy. So save a horse and hire a cowboy. They know how to round up horses, and I'm sure it's more humane than this. The Bureau of Land Management spent more than $450 million in the last five years on its wild horse and burrow program. $25 million went to gathering animals, but most of the money goes to caring for horses in long-term captivity. Unadopted animals um, are cared for long term in what we call off range pastures. These are big open grasslands for these animals to roam for the rest of their lives. And yes, it, it does cost about 60% of our budget to care for the unadopted and unsold animals. And although the horses are up for adoption, that program is drawing concern as well, as the BLM only monitors adopted horses for the first year. We don't place them in private ownership if we believe that people have the intent to sell them for slaughter. And we try to monitor that as best we can. But still, it does happen. It's, it's happened. Uh, you know, I can't, can't deny that those kinds of things have happened. It's something that we're acutely aware of and, and always on top of. And as for using cowboys to round up Mustangs, they stopped doing that back in the 70s. 
And I've talked to people who worked in the program prior to the use of helicopters, uh, and, and moving horses with, from horseback was just a really, really difficult situation. But on this morning, the Bureau of Land Management collected 46 horses, including six foals. Most of the animals were sent to temporary holding facilities, except two. A vet euthanized them for poor health. And although a handful of these horses will receive birth control and be released, the rest will now live a domestic life off the range and away from the land that once made them wild and free.